Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning Interactive Fiction with Twine and Sugar Cube. In this episode, we're going to be following up the last one in covering if statements. In the previous episode, I showed you how if statements are pretty powerful, how you can use them to create choices in your game and create complicated logic through by using them. And you saw by using if statements, it was a matter of using an if followed by an expression. And if that expression evaluated to true, then you could run certain code in there. And the expressions themselves are, you have quite a lot of options. You can set if something is equal to something else, if something is greater than or less than and so forth. Believe it or not, we still have a lot more to cover with if statements. So far, you've seen how to create an if statement. But what about in cases where you want an if statement to have other options? Let's say we come back here, and here I have in my break, and we set if money is defined. Actually, let's delete this and come up with a better example. Let's say we want to do if your money is greater is equal to is greater than or equal to 100 and your strength is greater than say 10 then you can buy the sword like so but you may want to provide users with another option let's say you want to factor charisma into this so if they didn't have 100 gold and their strength wasn't less wasn't greater than 10 then if they had good charisma, they could also buy the sword. Say they could smooth talk to person. To add that in here, we simply create an else if. In this case, we just go else if, and we provide the same expression. So in this case, charisma is greater than or equal to, let's say, 14, if we're going by an 18 scale, like so. And now this code, code would run also will say you smooth talk the sword. You, you smooth talk the salesman. What's nice about the else if is you can provide as many additional conditions as you want. Meaning, in this case, we wanted to say if charisma is greater than 14, well, we can also provide another condition. Let's say if their persuasion is greater than a, a certain number, then they could also buy it there as well. An if statement can has as many else ifs as you want, but there's going to be a time when you want to provide a default case. For instance, you provide a whole bunch of else if branches, but then at the very end of that, you can provide an also just a plain old else. In our example, you can buy a sword if your money is greater than 100 and your strength is greater than 10. Else, if you have charisma greater than 14, you can buy it. But if you wanted to display some text saying that you couldn't buy it because you don't match those conditions, you can provide an else like so. And then you can simply write, you can't buy the sword, like so. One last important thing about if statements is that you can nest them. And this is where you can create some really complicated logic. Let's say for instance, your charisma is greater than 14. then you'll get a deal on the price of the sword. And so what will happen is that this expression will be evaluated. If that's equal to true, then this, this if statement will be evaluated. And if this is equal to true, then the text will simply write, you got a deal, but you can provide other code there as well. You can nest as many if statements as you want into your you can nest as many if statements as you need. Okay, so I've talked about if statements a lot. Now let's see them in action. In this simple Twine story, we have the player waking up inside of a jail underwater, and there's an explosion occurs and the player has to get out. Currently, the player can only stand up or stay on the floor. Let's give them the ability to open up the cell that they're in by finding a wrench. And we'll provide the option of getting the wrench in this story. Okay, so here we have here, we can see it's not very expensive, and we have this death count variable that we're using in a previous video. We'll delete that, and we can delete this also. Okay, in this floor, let's provide a different passage.
So here we have the text saying, you stay on the floor riding out the shock waves. A jolt knocks you to your side where you notice a grease-stained wrench underneath the cot. And let's provide the user a way of taking the wrench. You can see here we made another passage. And let's give this another description. So here's our game so far. The player is, if the player chooses to stay on the floor, they'll notice the wrench underneath the cot. And then they'll go up and they'll take the wrench. And once the vibration ceases, you take the wrench and slowly stand. And then they come up to the trapped passage, which simply says, red flashing lights flicker throughout the holding cell while a high piercing alarm drowns out all the noise. If we come to stand up, at this case, the player hasn't found the wrench. And they just simply stand up and they, they get knocked around. And now at this point, we're providing an option for the player to use the wrench if they have it. First, we're going to define the wrench va value itself. And this is where we're going to use set has wrench is to, to true. Like so. Now inside of this passage here, we're going to check to see if the player has the wrench. First, we're going to check if we've defined the have wrenched variable. Like so, and if they don't have it, we're gonna give them the option to search for it. If the player has found the wrench, we're gonna allow them to open the cell and they're gonna do this by twisting a bar in the cell. And here's the thing, the cell will open with only three twists of the wrench. So they can't just twist it once, they're going to need to twist it multiple times. What I'm going to do is define a couple variables here. The first variable I'm going to define is door closed. And this is just simply the cell door is closed. And then we're going to define the twist count also. So the player hasn't twisted any of the bars and the door is closed. Now we're gonna go back to our trapped. And here in the else, sta else statement, we're going to provide another if statement. Okay, let's break down this code. First, we check to see if the player has the wrench. And if they don't have the wrench, then we're gonna send them to a passage called search. And this is where they can search the cell. If they do have the wrench and the door is closed and the, twist, and the twist count is less than three, we're gonna give them the option to twist the bar with the wrench. Otherwise, we're gonna say the cell door opens. In the search passage, I'm gonna allow the users to find the wrench. And we're gonna make this a little more neutral instead of, we'll just, instead of saying once the vibration ceases, we'll say, you take the wrench. And we'll just keep you slowly stand up as well. So now they'll take the wrench, they'll search, they'll find it here, they'll take it, and then we'll return back to this. They're going to see that the wrench is defined and the door closed is true, and then that they're allowed to twist the bar with the wrench.
So here you can see when we come to this passage, we increase the twist count. And if the twist count is less than three, then we prompt the user to try again, meaning to, to try twisting the bar one more time. And if it's three, then we give them the option one more time, and this will actually open the cell. And you can see here we have the cell. We're gonna click on this and we're just gonna finally just put a simple passage reading the bar comes free, allowing you to escape. Okay, let's see this in action now. Our simple story has grown somewhat complicated. All right, let's play this. And we can see the bang from a shock wave from the explosion. Now, if we stand up, we're gonna rise to the feet and another blast knocks you against the wall, wait it out. And then we can see red flashing lights flicker. Okay, now we need our wrench. So we're gonna search the cell and we find our grease stained wrench underneath the cot. We're gonna take the wrench. You take the wrench and slowly stand up. And now you can see we have this twist bar with wrench. So we're gonna twist it. The wrench strains against the loose bar in your cell, but it doesn't come free. Try again, try again, one more time. The bar comes free, allowing you to escape. Let's restart this. And this time we're gonna try it a different way. We're gonna stay on the floor. We can see the wrench now. We take the wrench, we stand up, and then we'll continue to do the try again one more time. Bam, the bar comes free, allowing you to escape. And as you can see, this very simple twine story has gained a little bit of depth and, and now uses variables to track inventory items and it uses if statements to check players' progress. And it makes the game just fun to play. Now, this game is very simple, but as you can see, you can build and build on this to make really complex twine stories. All right, that's the end of this episode. In the next episode, I'll introduce you to arrays and show you how you can use arrays to manage all your various variables. All right, well, that's the end of this episode. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. See you then.